running of your container. Okay. So you can imagine uh, what it takes to sort of uh, set up Galaxy. Um, and uh, using this technology or this approach, you're able to circumvent all that and just one command and voila, you know, you, you're running uh, a website. And also this shows you potentially, you know, you can make services available uh, from your computer or from your institute uh, to other people uh, through uh, Docker containers. You may require some IT administrative rights or uh, discuss that with your IT department. But it kind of gives you uh, or illustrates the power of this uh, approach and technology. Okay. Um, so, you know, you can do quite a lot. Uh, for those that are familiar with Docker, you know, there's quite a lot of things that you can do. Um, Okay, anyway, so that, that, that was the point uh, to illustrate uh, the utility of this command. And um, um, sort of just as an example of how I run it, because I downloaded it. <coughs> My Docker command is slightly different, something that you could try, because I knew what the image is. Uh, when I'm running this, you know, I can just copy the image ID and just run that, okay? Because I already have it installed. So the next, so things is, um, now we have a lot of things running and sometimes they can be a bit unwieldy to know how many containers are running on your system, which container, what's the name of your container. Uh, so if you do on your terminal docker ps, uh, you're able to list uh, docker containers uh, that are running on your system, okay? And uh, if you do ps minus a, which is all, you'll also see all the containers that have uh, exited uh, before, okay? So, come to your terminal here, you can use docker ps, oops, sorry. Yep, there we go. So, you can see here when I do docker ps, it's showing me the images. This is a running one in the front of this. Commands, and then uh, uh, we can do a little bit more in the afternoon. Uh, so we've seen this uh, Docker PS. Uh, which allows us to 
list the running processes, uh, which in this case is Docker um, containers, right? So, um, and if we do uh, minus A, we're able to see uh, all the containers that have been running, including the ones that have been exited. And uh, Docker stop allows you to uh, stop um, the, uh, the running container, okay? So, if you want to do that, uh, it means you need to provide the ID of the container, okay? So, if you don't know what the ID is, you can run docker ps and it will give you the ID of the container, uh, which you provide to docker stop, and uh, you're able to stop that container. So, docker exec, which is execute, uh, we run commands <coughs> within the container, okay? So I can execute commands within the container uh, through Docker execute. Okay, we'll see uh, examples of it. So um, ordinarily you can press Control C to stop a container currently running in your terminal. Um, however, if the container is still running in the background uh, with a in detach mode as we are doing currently, um, you don't have a way to stop it, okay? Because it's running as a background process, okay? We can't see it interactively. And therefore, we want to issue docker stop and then give it the container ID. Uh, so let's try and do that um, here on the terminal. Um, so if I do uh, docker, because I don't know my processes around that, and I see I'm running um, a container here, uh, which is this Galaxy uh, web uh, instance, and I want to stop it. Um, so I can't remember the name. Remember, this is the image. Uh, that's not the container. So what we want is to get this name here, um, which is a unique ID. I'll copy that, and then I'll run Joker stop, and then the name of the container, and um, if I then run docker ps again, I don't have any running container, okay? I've exited that container, right? So, so in that case, it has Galaxy, the Galaxy running on your browser to the console. Yes, 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 yes. So if you go back to your browser, then you'll see the Galaxy thing, because you've stopped that container. Okay. okay. So by doing this, what we've stopped is the container, but our Galaxy image is still there. Okay, and we can spin off multiple containers, multiple instances uh, of that image. Okay. So in the afternoon, uh, I'm gonna talk about mounts and volumes. Remember, we are working within a sandbox, and we may need to go and fetch something outside of our container. Okay, and for that we run an exercise or so that will allow us to look at the log files and some of the data that have been written on the container and we can have them run or get written on our home folder. So we're just going to continue with that a little bit. Um, so we'll do that uh, once we come in. And then um, we'll also go through how to create your own Docker image. I think we have time. Turns out to be quite straightforward and easy. And then um, we might go through a tutorial uh, for running an actual task uh, with, uh, with with Docker. Okay. So we'll break, and then uh, when we come back in the afternoon, we'll be able to run those two exercises. So we so, for example, we can the 